Genesis Part 2 is around the corner, and it's time you knew the basics of Ark's story, allowing you to understand what's going on. To keep in mind, this is a condensed summary only covering the key parts, and we'll have spoilers. Furthermore, a massive thank you to Chaos, Gavin, Harbinger, and Iconox for their help with this video. With that being said, let's dive straight in. The story of Ark begins in the 21st century. It is during this time that a meteor made its way to Earth containing element, the very substance that would become the catalyst to significant advancement and suffering. This meteor crashed near Sanctuary, and when the meteor landed, it immediately began to melt, carving rivers of element deep into the Earth's crust. Now, after the humans discovered the element, they quickly learned just how many uses it had. It was a liquid metal that could be made into a solid and gas. And this discovery allowed Sanctuary to grow and advance its technology at an incredible rate. This also led to the creation of the Homo Deus, which is Latin for human god. Now, they are humans that have moved beyond our reality into a body of pure energy and thought and can use element to know all the things happening in the world around them. This allows them to do many wonders like control and operate the arcs, as well as bring survivors back from the dead. However, with these astonishing achievements did come a drawback though. Whenever element used, be it to make their buildings, power their technology, etc., it spread trace amounts of itself into the Earth's atmosphere. Now this trace amount takes on a different form compared to its base form. See, when this form encounters any living creature, it infects them like a disease, rewriting their DNA on a cellular level, corrupting them and forcing them to become hostile and a slave to the hive mind. However, this spread at such a slow rate that even after thousands of years of commercial use, it would have never reached the rate that would have caused the wasteland we see in extinction. Fast forward to the 24th century, there's only two factions left on Earth that we know of, that being the United Republic of Earth, the URE, and the Terran Federation. It is during this time that we also meet Diana Alteris, an orbital strike fighter pilot for the URE, and Santiago da Costa, a hacker and weapons engineer for the Federation. Both factions had similar morals, beliefs, and cultures, so similar that HLNA described it as two dogs fighting over the last scrap of meat only to be left starving. Due to this created tension between the URE and the Federation. Eventually this tension led to the creation of the tech suits and weaponry by the URE. However, Santiago then hacked into the URE database and reverse engineered their designs allowing him to create a devastating tech weapons for the Federation. Sometime after Dana and Santiago died, the URE and the Federation were sent into all that war. Now we do not know how long it lasted or how many died, but we do know the element weapons had a devastating effect not only on the warfare, but on the earth itself. Now element weapons give off more element residue into the atmosphere compared to commercial element technologies. Now, it is through this continuous through the war that the Earth started to get corrupted. So, what would have taken thousands and thousands of years to happen, already started happening during the war. So, with the Earth beginning to corrupt, both the URE and the Federation realized Element is alive and it's slowly destroying the planet. They ended their war and started to work together to save the Earth. The URE began to create massive biodomes called arcs that would surround the planet. The goal was to create a safe ecosystem for animals and humans to survive until the element toxicity level was low enough for the arcs to return to Earth and terraform the planet, restoring it to its former glory. This was called the Reseed Protocol and could only be activated by a non-corrupted human at the arcs control center on Earth near Sanctuary. During this time, scientists discovered a hidden part of the brain, as noted by Helena. I did a spot of research just now, and it turns out that there's something called an engrammic matrix that persists in the human brain after death. If the conditions are just right and that matrix gets preserved, scientists can scan it, even centuries later. This matrix ultimately led the scientists to be able to retrieve the personalities of all those that have died before us and to then pop them into the Ark like nothing had happened. The Federation, on the other hand, began to develop a very different way of avoiding the corruption. See, instead of trying to fix the Earth like the URU, they decided to leave it entirely. The Federation made a massive spaceship called the Genesis ship, capable of carrying an enormous amount of humans into space and warp away from the Earth. Now this is the colony ship that will be on in Genesis Part 2. In combination with the colony ship, they developed the Genesis Simulation, a virtual world where the people frozen in the pods can live whilst preparing them for their arrival when they make it to a habitable location in another solar system. The Genesis Simulation and the Arcs used genetic manipulation, meaning they could put whatever creature they wanted to with the humans and see how the humans responded, with the overall goal of making the best survivor possible. This is why we see dinosaurs and other fantasy creatures 
in the simulation and the arcs. The Genesis ship was created at a Rat Prime, which in Latin means the first plow. A Rat Prime also houses the Genesis Ship Control Center on Earth and allows for the Homo Deus to be sent in the Genesis simulation. Furthermore, a Rat Prime is believed to be in Australia, given it's located on the opposite side of the Earth and Sanctuary being located in America. The last way to escape the corruption, according to HLNA, was to ascend and become a Homo Deus, just like Helena, allowing them to guide the survivors and help save humanity. Shortly after the Arcs were sent into space, the Federation was still developing the colony ship, and as at this time the Titans began appearing for the first time. And as soon as they appeared, they started attacking human settlements. They attacked settlement after settlement after settlement, until only Sanctuary and a Rat Prime were left. And while a Rat Prime was under attack, the humans went ahead and launched the Genesis ship, fleeing the planet. With the Ark and the Genesis ship in space, any humans left on the planet were wiped out either by natural causes, killed by the titans, or just died off. And with no humans left to stop them, the element was free to claim the Earth. Years later, after humanity's extinction, the Arcs brought to life the survivors before us that would change everything. Here we meet Helena Walker, a biologist from the 21st century Australia. Helena created the dossiers of the creatures we encounter in the Arcs. Furthermore, she ascends to become a Homo Deus in extinction. From there, she works to save what's left of humanity and eventually creates the friendly companion HLNA to help us save humanity yet again from the brink of something catastrophic. We next meet Sir Edmund Rockwell, a chemist from the 19th century London, the creator of the recipes for consumables and kibble, but more importantly, the main antagonist in our story. After hearing certain rumours about his old friend Helena and encountering Element, Rockwell's boundaries between what is ethical and unethical was all but erased eventually leading him to desire for power, the power to become a god. Instead, he became a mutant and the new overseer of aberration. In Genesis Part 1, he takes the role of the corrupted master controller, the very reason the Genesis simulation is rigged, using it to enslave survivors instead of releasing them into the Genesis ship. In Genesis Part 2, Rockwell has spread across the Genesis ship, using it for his own benefit creating creatures, twisted biomes, and attempting to change its destination. His goal is to become the sole ruler of the cosmos. Next, we meet Mei Yin Li. Mei Yin is a Chinese warrior from the Thury Kingdom's era after the Yellow Turban Rebellion in China, so 3rd century. She was unrivaled in taming the creatures of the Arcs, helped Helena send to become a Homo Deus in extinction, and eventually beamed her into the Genesis simulation. She also has a love interest with Diana Altaris. Next is Diana Altaris, which already covered earlier, she's a pilot for the URE. She was also the first survivor to come back from death thanks to the One Who Waits, which is Helena in her ascended form. She also helped Mei Yin beam Helena into the Genesis simulation. Now what's cool is, according to the developers, we have not seen the last of Mei Yin and Diana yet. And the final survivor before us is Santiago da Costa, a citizen and a valued part of the Terran Federation. Santiago is unprecedented hacker, weapons designer, and the creator of the mechs we used to battle the Titans in Extinction. He sacrificed his own life to save the other survivors in Extinction, and a clone is teased in the Arc 2 cinematic trailer. This clone shuts down what is left of the Genesis simulation. Shortly after their time had passed, we were created, starting our journey on the island, making our way to Scorched Earth, then on to Aberration, where we come face to face with Rockwell himself. Then from here, we make our way to Earth, killing the Titans, and then activating the Reseed Protocol to save Earth. After that is all done, we go ahead and take control of another survivor who is located on the Genesis ship far away in space. From here, we make our way through the corrupted simulation, defeating Rockwell's digital form and escaping the simulation, leading us to where we are now. Before it spreads. It says here, 
tech suit for emergency use only. This definitely qualifies. Now that you aren't so squishy, we should figure out which part of the colony ship we're in. If we can just... Oh, that's not good at all! Welcome, Survivor. Enjoy the view. You see before you the pinnacle of mankind's ingenuity. All of humanity's hopes and dreams carefully nestled within this lifeboat. Each of its shining rings are laden with miracles of science and nature. A paradise where the boundary between the biological and technological has been all but erased. And now all of it is mine. I control this vessel now. I command its evolution. And very soon, its destination. From there, my will shall spread across the cosmos forever, in infinite and undying. And there's nothing you or that witless puppet, that shadow, 